What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to dive into some essential programming concepts, including organizational techniques and logical concepts. This material is critical for anyone studying for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, and it's valuable for anyone starting out in programming. So we're going to talk about organizational techniques such as pseudocode concepts, object-oriented methods, comments and documentation, flowchart concepts, and sequence. Then we're going to talk about logical concepts such as branching and looping. So by the end of this session, you'll have a solid grasp of how to structure and plan code, as well as how programs make decisions and repeat tasks. So let's get started. All right. So programming isn't just about writing lines of code. Effective programming requires planning and organization. This ensures that code is easy to understand, maintain, and debug. So let's begin by looking at several key organizational techniques. First, we're going to talk about pseudocode. So pseudocode, this is a method for planning out algorithms and logic before writing actual code in a programming language. It's written in plain language, making it easy to understand without requiring knowledge or a specific language's syntax. So why do we use pseudocode? Well, it's easy to understand for anyone, even non-programmers. It helps programmers focus on the logic rather than the syntax of a specific language. And when working in teams, pseudocode is a great way to communicate algorithms. Next, let's discuss object-oriented programming, which is one of the most popular programming paradigms. So in object-oriented programming, programs are organized around objects rather than actions. And an object is an instance of a class, which can have both data and functions associated with it. And some of the key concepts in object-oriented programming are as follows. So a class, this is a blueprint for creating objects. So for example, you can have a car class with attributes like color and make and methods like start or stop. Also, another key concept is encapsulation. And this refers to keeping the data or the attributes and the code or the methods safe within an object and not exposing it unnecessarily. Another concept is inheritance. This allows a class to inherit properties and methods from another class, promoting code reuse. And then we have a concept called polymorphism. So objects can take on different forms, meaning methods and different classes can share the same name, but but behave differently. So object-oriented methods, it helps organize programs into small, manageable, and reusable pieces of code, making development more efficient and easier to maintain. Now let's look at comments and documentation. So writing code is only part of the job. It's equally important to make sure that anyone else, including your future self, can understand what your code is doing. And this is where comments and documentation come into play. So let's talk about the types of comments. The first one we have is called inline comments. And these are brief comments placed next to lines of code to explain their purpose. And if you look at this picture right here, you can see the inline comment right here that states calculate the sum of two numbers. The next type of comment we have is called a block comment. And these are larger comments that might explain an entire section of code or provide detailed information. So in this picture right here, we have a block comment where it states this function takes two numbers as input and returns their sum. That is a block comment. So why are comments important? Well, comments help make code more understandable, especially for others who might be reading it later. Comments also offer maintainability. So well-documented code is easier to update and debug in the future. And it's essentially a best practice to comment. So good comments help explain why certain decisions were made, not just what the code is doing. In addition to comments, documentation provides a more comprehensive explanation of how to use code or software and is often written written in external documents or in a structured format within the code itself, like doc strings in Python. All right, so let's move on to flow charts, which is a visual method for organizing the flow of a program. So flow charts use diagrams to represent the sequence of steps in the process, making them an essential tool in the planning phase of development. And we have various flow chart symbols. So we got the oval. This represents the start and end points. We have a rectangle. This represents a process or an action. We have the diamond. This represents a decision point. And we have an arrow. This indicates the flow or direction of the process. 
And the most basic flowchart concept is sequence, which is an ordered series of steps that the program follows one after the other. There are no decisions or loops in the sequence. Each action is executed only once. So essentially, flowcharts are useful for visualizing the structure of programs, helping programmers to ensure they follow the correct logic flow. All right, so let's shift focus to logic concepts and programming. These concepts help dictate the flow of programs and define how decisions and repetitions are handled. And the first one we're gonna talk about is called branching or decision making. And this allows a program to execute different blocks of code based on certain conditions. And these are the most common branching concepts. We have what is called an if else statement. So these check on the condition and execute one block of code if the condition is true and another block if the condition is false. Then we have what is called a nested if statement. So sometimes multiple conditions need to be checked and nested if statements allow for this. Then we have what is called a switch case statement. So another branching structure that's used to test multiple conditions is commonly found in languages like C, C++, or Java. So branching is crucial because it allows programs to make decisions based on on input, user interactions, and other data. Next, we're going to talk about looping or repetition. So looping, this allows a program to repeat a set of instructions multiple times until a certain condition is met. And there are several types of loops. The first one we have is called a while loop. So a while loop repeats as long as a specified condition is true. Then we have what is called a for loop. So a for loop is used when you know how many times you want to repeat a set of instructions. Then we have what is called a do while loop. And this is similar to a while loop, but it generates the code inside the loop and will run at least once, even if the condition is false. So loops are essential for tasks that require repetition, such as iterating through a list of items or continuously checking for user input. All right, so in this video, we covered essential programming organizational techniques and logic concepts that will help you better understand how programs are structured and how they operate. So we talked about pseudocode, and this is good for planning and structuring code. We talked about object-oriented methods, and this is used to help organize programs into reusable objects. We talked about comments and documentation. This is to ensure code is readable and maintainable. We talked about flowchart concepts. This is for visualizing the flow of a program and focusing on sequences. We talked about branching. This is for making decisions in a program. And we talked about looping, and this is for repeating actions in a program. So these are the fundamental concepts that you'll need to grasp for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam. And more importantly, they'll make you a more effective programmer. So with all of that said, let's do some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, what is the primary purpose of pseudocode in programming? Is it to execute a simplified version of a program? Is it to create a human readable outline of program logic? Is it to automate code generation or is it to debug a program at runtime? And the correct answer is it is to create a human readable outline of program logic. So pseudocode is used to outline the structure and logic of a program in a simplified human readable format. It allows developers to conceptualize the flow of a program without worrying about the specific syntax of a programming language. Next question. Which of the following is an example of a logic concept involving repetition in programming? Is it branching? looping, flow charting, or object-oriented methods? And the correct answer is looping. So looping, this refers to the repetition of a block of code as long as a specific condition is met. It is a fundamental logic concept used in repeat actions, such as iterating over a list of items. And our final question, which organizational technique is commonly used to visualize the step-by-step -step flow of program logic? Is it object-oriented programming? Is it flowcharts? Is it a variable or is it arrays? And the correct answer is it is a flow chart. So flow charts, they are graphical representations used to illustrate the sequence of operations in a process or program. Each step is depicted as a box or shape connected by arrows showing the flow from one action to the next. And this helps in visualizing the logical sequence of a program. 